Right guys, welcome to Research Methods question 6. This is a 12 mark designer study question. Now extended writing questions in research methods are quite common now. They aren't always 12 marks, they can range from 4 or 6 markers on things like writing consent forms or writing debriefs, but they can also go all the way up to 12 mark study designing questions like this one. They're designed to test a wide range of knowledge and research methods and your ability to bring it all together in a way that makes sense. Okay, so as a general rule, they test a lot of different things and by doing that, they test your understanding of how everything fits together. So this is the question. Don't get thrown off by the first sentence. The question follows on from a couple of previous questions in the 2019 paper. Basically, you're being asked to design an independent group study on the impact of group work on happiness levels. So, in a sec, I'm going to go through the important bits of information in the question, and then we'll look through some of the key things to consider before you start writing an answer. If you want to have a go at the question before I do any of that, then go ahead and pause the video now and give it a go. Okay, remember, it's a 12 marker, so you don't want to be skimping on the detail. So, here are the important bits to pick out from the scenario. So, as you can see, you're given everything that you need. The amount of pupils, what the study is about, what's being measured, how it's being measured, and so on and so on. You're also given specific bullet points that indicate what you need to focus your answer on. You don't need to talk about any more than what's in those bullet points. There's plenty there to fill 12 marks. The vital bit of information is that last bit, where it says, justify your design choices. Okay. When this question came up in the 2019 exam series, a lot of students showed a huge amount of knowledge of the individual concepts that they were talking about, but they also lost a lot of marks because they didn't justify why they were doing the things that they said that they were doing. Okay, so that's going to be a really important element of this question if you want to get a nice amount of marks. So, for each of the bullet points, there are a few little bits of information just to kind of consider. If we're going to write an aim, we need to remember that we are using a nice phrasing like to investigate X, Y, Z. It just makes for a nice concise aim if you use that phrase. For the second bullet point where you're being asked to talk about the variables and the details of the task, you're effectively being asked to talk about the IV and the DV, and then you need to think of an appropriate task for 30 psychology students to do. Don't overthink it, but you do also need to provide a nice amount of detail on what they're going to do. When it comes to minimizing the effects of extraneous variables, remember you generally have got two main ways in which you deal with extraneous variables, and those are randomization and standardization. So that would be the way to go for me. You could talk about things like ability, mood, time, boredom. You can also talk about things like temperature in the room and things as well. Like there's loads of stuff that you could technically talk about when you are talking about extraneous variables. And then finally, your data handling and analysis. So it specifies that you need to be using descriptive statistics. So that is the mean mode, the median, the standard deviation, and the range. So you need to be thinking ahead of time what you want to be using and why. Okay, so I've already made a decision that I'm going to be using the mean and the standard deviation, and that's because I already have in my head this idea that happiness levels are going to be measured by interval data. Okay, I've also decided to put a bar chart in there, but you don't necessarily need to do that, and I'll point that out to you again when I get to that bit in my answer. So, I'm going to go through a possible answer with you now. If you want to have a go at writing this for yourself now that we've gone through some of the basics and, some of, and through some of the information, then again, you can pause the video now and have a go. I'm going to go through the answer bullet point by bullet point and then address all the important bits after I've done each section. So, here we go. The first bullet point is a nice, simple, easy one. Write an aim. It's only a sentence. I've highlighted that 
crucial phrasing, um, and that should be everything that you need for this first bullet point. The second bullet point is slightly chunkier. So here we're talking about our variables and our task. So I've highlighted in green the important bits. I've decided on a task, and it's going to be to create a mind map on behavioral treatments for phobias. And I've decided what my two groups are going to be, which are working in groups of five for 30 minutes or working by yourself for 30 minutes. And by explaining what the task is, I've also determined what my IV and my DV is going to be. And that is group or individual task for the IV and then a change in happiness score for the DV. Note as well that I've started off my task by saying they're taking a happiness questionnaire first and then they're going to get the happiness questionnaire again. OK, because I need to have something to compare it to. Moving on then, we have the minimization of extraneous variables. I've got three things for you here. All the important bits are highlighted in blue. So I've gone for randomization and standardization in all three of these things. The first one is all about randomly allocating the participants. And then the reason I've done that, so my justification, is to reduce the impact of individual differences. There's all kinds of individual differences that you could talk about. I've specifically gone for ability or pretest mood. I've also talked about the fact that I'm standardizing the content. So not only is everybody doing the same mind map, but also I'm going to make sure that everyone studied the content beforehand so that the level of knowledge of each student should be roughly the same. And then finally, I am also going to do a little bit of randomization with the questions in the questionnaire. All the participants are getting the same questionnaire before and after, but I might randomize the order of the questions, or I might even change the direction of the questions as well in order to avoid an acquiescence bias. Okay? So remember, justification every step of the way. And then finally, we have the data analysis. So again, important bits in red. So I have assumed that the creation of a happiness score is going to be interval data, which means that I'm going to use a mean and I'm going to use a standard deviation. Okay. If you had decided to use a happiness rating scale instead, then you might have chosen ordinal data and therefore the median. Um, but as it stands for me, I've gone for the mean and the standard deviation because I'm using interval data. That allows me to draw some conclusions about the effectiveness of group work on happiness, but it also allows me to see if the impact of the IV on the DV was consistent. Okay, so that's the standard deviation. And then I'm also just going to chuck in a sentence about a bar chart. You don't necessarily need it, but I just wanted it to kind of get that extra little bit of detail in there. All I've done is explain what my bar chart is going to look like and what's going to be plotted on which axis. OK, you could, if you wanted to draw a bar chart, like as an example to show the examiner, this is roughly what it would look like. But you don't have to. It's more a case of if you've got a little bit of time to spare or you've got some space left on your piece of paper, then sketch a bar chart. OK, so that is the end of the video. I hope it's all made sense and I hope it's been useful. If you've got any questions, please pop them in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you. ASAP. Thank you very much for listening and I will see you in the next one.